guys. Hey Jeb, wait, aren't you meant to be on holiday right now? Uh, yeah, I was but I decided to come back early. Hey, so, what is this place? What does it do again? The research park. We set it up when uh, we started discovering those bits of advanced technology and they started appearing around the airfield. You discovered the first piece, remember? Uh, yeah, yes. So since I popped off on holiday, I haven't been paying attention. What's up with the sticks and the gnat? I heard rumors the gnat were building up a military force. Ha ha ha. having a real military? Ha 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 ha. Jeff, you crack me up. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, just wondering. It did seem pretty random. Not much going on right now? We were going to launch the first rocket to the space program the other day, but your replacement Dudberg Kerman got food poisoning. Not much of a problem, we've all been a bit busy studying these mysterious technology pieces. Werner Kerman has some insane theory about time-travelling aliens. Well, since I'm back now, should we launch? Can do. Also, I don't suppose I can have a high-powered camera to take with me on the launch. Just to get some pictures. Hello, I'm Andrew Elysium, and this is Kerbal Origins, episode one. Backwards in time. Uh, so right, we have no technology, and we've got to build our first rocket ship thing. Now, you know, this launch was just going to be a, a quick, you know, up and down, just to test out the systems, but uh, Jeb is insisting for some reason that we go north and uh, fly to the North Pole uh, over the over the Nat uh, territory. So. Uh, we'll, I guess we're going to try going north, so we've got to put enough fuel on and so on that we actually, you know, can actually get to the North Pole. I'm thinking if we put uh, solid fuel boosters on the bottom as well, um, they should overheat and pop off. Or we can force them to overheat by using the previous engine provided they're still on, I think. So that should be fine, you just got to make sure we time the staging right. So, I think three of them. I think if you put four on top of the one, so you put five total, then it overheats too quick, so I think we're going to try that. This is still very much uh, uh, iffy experimental, because we don't need decouplers yet, of course, so this being career mode. We've got to unlock all the rest of the technology that we're expecting to get, so Jebediah Kerman is in. And let's load up the launch pad. Bam! Right, let's uh, just transmit that, because we've got enough energy to do that, and it's 100% transmission rate. Now, one thing I want to do in this is not repeatedly transmit the same bit of data, if I can avoid it. Um, because you can just keep transmitting the same bit of data until you've got all the science from it, so it's 60% each time, so you just keep doing it. I will just do it once, and then I come back and do it physically for 10 seconds if I can, because otherwise it's a little bit spammy. Go, stage it, and yes, we left it off. Awesome, sweet. Um, I probably won't use all the science, uh, like all these crew reports, because we can only hold a certain amount in the capsule, so we'll probably end up dumping some of them. I'm just keeping a watch on our electric charge because we won't be able to transmit a lot. We've got the engine to keep running to get the electric charge going, but that's the only thing that's going to actually keep us in electricity. And we need enough electricity that we can actually fly up, we can do our thing, we can land, we can make sure the parachutes come out, and if we want to, like, transmit any more. So we'll try and get as many as we can, but we can always have rights if we need to. Now, I want to talk a bit about time travel. It's impossible. Okay, that, that's pretty simple. Um, so let's talk about time travel in if it was possible. Right, there are two different versions of time travel, one of which is the classical time travel that you go back in time and then you can change events to come. But can you? Uh, in fact, if you could go back in time into your own past and influence your own future, then the grandfather paradox where you kill your own grandfather, your grandfather never existed, you can't be born, you can't go back in time to kill your own grandfather. So, the only way that can happen in that timeline is if, when you go back in time and you try and do stuff, everything you do has already been done, i.e. Martin McFly setting his parents up or whatever. That's classical time travel and how it should be displayed in... Hollywood sort of stuff. Now note that you cannot change the future in it because the future has already been changed to be how it is. 
The other version is, uh, what I refer to as quantum time travel, in that there is a, a smallest unit of time, and if you go back in time, you have to jump from your unit of time to another unit of time, and you can fully derail that unit of time as much as you want. There can be multiple people appearing, like you could have, you go back in time, you could meet yourself. Right, let's try and get to the EVA properly. Just grab a few reports. Sweet. Anyway, um, you can go back in time, there can be multiple of you. You can influence the future, you completely derail the future. Merely going back in time will derail the future because you'll change certain things, small things. Uh, we're talking about sort of the butterfly effect that you change small air currents which can kill things and main things or cause hurricanes in certain places where there were only hurricanes in other places before and you can sort of derail the future just by merely existing. Um, so yeah, that's quantum time travel. No, quantum time travel, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Classical time travel, you can't. Now the problem is Either one of those is fine, and depicting them in films really easy, because one, you whatever you do has already been done. Let's try an EVA this time. Um, Jeb, for some reason, actually really wants to stretch his legs. Uh, I wonder what he's asking for that camera for. Maybe he wants to take some pictures from orbit. Huh. What is up to? We're collecting data. That's good. Nice that data to be collected up here. Ooh. It looks like Jeb wanted the high power camera to take pictures of the Nat to prove that they were building a military force because no one believed him. That is clever. So Jeb's trying to change the future by making sure that people believe that the Nat is the enemy rather than ending up having that war of the sticks to begin with that war down both sides. That's clever. Although unfortunately coming back in time has seems to have derailed the uh, space program somewhat. Uh, the space center is notably different. And can you get back in? Yeah, good. I'm having trouble boarding there. So yeah, notice that in one classical time travel, uh, wherever you go back in time has already been done, because you've already gone back in time to create yourself going back in time. And notice in quantum time travel, you can do whatever the hell you want. Now, the problem I have is, I don't mind which one Hollywood depicts, time travel is impossible. Um, but whenever something depicts it and goes, ah, oh, well you went back in time, but when you back, went back in time, you cause what happened already, and then it ends up with the hero having to try and go back in time, and then making a different choice, and that changes the future. Because for some reason, you can switch between whichever theory of time travel you're using at the same time, and be like, ah, well, everything's predetermined, except for this plot-changing point. And that really just bugs me, because it, it's inconsistencies in how you're accepting um, the rules of science as portrayed in your film. Uh, keep Stick to one set. Don't keep willy-nilly jumping about between different things just so it suits whatever plot purpose you want at the moment. Because that's warping things to... It's deus ex machina. Literally God from the machines. Which comes from sort of the Greek thing when in Greek plays, God would literally walk on stage and fix things for heroes when they're in difficult circumstances. And by doing this in a film, you are literally doing the sort of the scientific modern equivalent of God from the Machines in that you are warping scientific principles as displayed in your film, because of course, you know, Sam Trout is impossible, to make your film work. Don't do that. It's cheap. It's a cheap, tacky way of jumping out of problems that you've caused yourself and for writing something so that it fits your ideal plot in your head, because you warp reality, your film's reality, to make it work. It's silly. I'm sorry, but that's 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 just... It, it's shoddy story writing. Anyway, we're coming in here. We've got the very limited fuel, so I think we're going to be mainly relying on the parachute. Now, what I'm mainly doing the burning of the engine there for instead of saving the engine is I want to kind of make sure I've got enough fuel and uh, battery, uh, electricity in the batteries. And we're running out of electricity. Of course, the engine produces electricity, so I wanted to run that to keep enough electricity for when we release the parachute. It looks like we're going to have to release the parachute relatively soon anyway. Uh, and I just have to hope it won't get ripped off. It's a very desolate wasteland up here in the, uh, the North Pole. Hmm. Our velocity is still 2 kilometers a second, so that's not great. Uh, I'll be honest, that's a little worrying. Here we go. Re-entry effects. 
we'll have to pop the parachute because we're running out of fuel, uh, electricity. So there's a parachute. We've got reentry effects along the parachute rope. That's uh, surprising the parachute rope doesn't melt, burn, or just, I don't know, disintegrate and vaporize under that amount of heat. But oh well. Uh, 400. 300. 300. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what speed when it opens we'll have to be at. This is going to be interesting. I'm just waiting with bated breath now because I don't know whether this is going to hold. If it doesn't hold, we'll see how much, uh, what, what, what's it called, uh, bounce, recoil, something. How much cushioning the, uh, the tanks and the rocket will give us. So, moment of truth. And open! Yes! We got down to just over 100 when that happened and that meant we did manage it. I I think that was pretty damn close there. I think we were pushing the limits of that parachute. Um, and now we've got to do is jump out, grab a sample, and uh, we're fine. Boing. You know, it's designed that way. Uh, and Jeb jumps out because we haven't discovered ladders yet because apparently ladders are really complicated and they take a lot of science to come up with. So we need to earn ourselves some science. Let's grab... Uh, actually, no, let's put the flag down. Let's mark the first space flight, even if it was a suborbital trajectory. Um, Alright, what do we call this place? Uh, Arctic One? That seems to be fitting. It's our first landing in the Arctic, or it's our first flight and we landed in the Arctic. Hmm. Uh, I, I never have any idea what to put in these flak tips. Uh, just success. Um, there we go, there we go. Space not painted, ceiling as some um, suspected. And let's, let, let's pose for a picture in the Arctic so we can show to everyone back in the Elysian Empire that Jebediah is a badass and he will lead our people into a new age of rocketry. Because a lot of people have just stepped away from the space flight recently with... Uh, this new focus on uh, space alien time travel stuff that's going on and there's a number of uh, sort of cheap uh, science fiction books that have been written about it. Um, this does seem to be rather different from the timeline we came from. Hmm, interesting. So, right, uh, I've got that. Right, apparently there's a way to revert our flight. Is it on the map screen? No... It's maybe, maybe it's on the, the main screen then. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh! Recover vessel? That's kind of neat. It's really hidden. I'd kind of like to know about that. Um, there needs to be something pointing to it, or at least it exists normally, maybe. I don't know. But that's nice. There we go. It's a good amount of science there. And let's just recover our craft as well, because uh, we've got... Yeah, ooh, more, more science. That's good. Yay, more science. We like science. Now, the aim of this is, our uh, Jeb's mission is to make sure that we're more technologically advanced than that and try and make sure that we have the up in technology. And to that end, we want to unlock more stuff than we had when we left our timeline. So we want to have like warp drives and plasma engines and microwave emitters and stuff. Really cool stuff. So let's unlock some technology. So... Well, it's, we, we've we've seen this before, but we're not going to mention it to all the scientists, so we'll grab these. Uh, ooh, which one do we want to grab next? Ooh, Mechjeb case. Uh, I, I kind of want Mechjeb, but I think that's a lot of science. And we kind of do need the science module thing that allows us to get more science. That would be a good investment, but uh, we can't afford that either, so... Uh, I think we'll just grab one of these two that we can actually afford. Um. A decoupler. Uh, oh, that's got to be. So yeah, we're going for the first decoupler, and awesome. Right. We will see you next time in episode two of Kerbal Origins. And stay shiny, everybody.